What's up guys? This is Brent with Western Equipment and in this video I'm going to be giving you a quick overview of every piece of equipment that is in the Steel AK battery lineup. First, let's talk a little bit about what the AK series is and where it falls in the battery lineup of products from steel. So, in the steel battery lineups, there are three different series of equipment, one being the AI, which I have already done a video on that full lineup that only includes a weed eater, hedge trimmer, and a blower. Now, this is the AK series, so this is moving up. This is the second set of equipment here that we're gonna be going over today. And then above that is the AP series, which is going to be the professional series. So the AK series is more of your mid-residential level equipment. This is not gonna necessarily be what's best for that professional grade or that long-term use, but these are going to be great implements for residential customers. And it has a lot wider variety of equipment than the AI series does and if you notice here at the front of the table there are going to be three different batteries in this series that are going to be removable rather than in the AI series where the battery is integrated into the unit so we'll talk more about these batteries here in a minute but just to go over what all units that we have in the AK series we'll start here with the hedge trimmer which we have an HSA 56 it is going to come with a shroud here or a scabbard to go over that cutter bar. Then we're going to have two different chainsaws here. One is going to be the MSA 120C, also going to come with a scabbard, chain, and a 12 inch bar. The next is gonna be the MSA 140C. This is also gonna come with a 12 inch bar, chain, and scabbard. Then we have a blower in this series, which is gonna be the BGA 57. The charger that's going to come with this set Normally, you, whenever we order these AK units, you would order them with a battery and charger. You don't have to. If you already have batteries and chargers, you can order these units individually without those. But if you do order them as a set, you are gonna get an AL101 charger, and then either an AK10, an AK20, or an AK30 battery. Now, moving out front here, what we're going to have is we are going to have an extended hedge trimmer over here with the HLA 56. So this is going to be an extended hedge trimmer that also is adjustable here at the end to give you a wide range of options there of angles to be able to cut at and also that extended reach. Then next to that, we're going to have the FSA 57, which is going to be the smaller of the two trimmers in the weed eater segment here of the AK series. Then right here in the middle, we're gonna have the RMA 460V. Now, there are two different mowers in the AK section. I only have the one because I have the RMA 460V because the V means that it is self-propelled. The other model in this section is the RMA 460. So the only difference there that we'll see is that the 460 does not have the self-propelled, which again, we'll show more here in a minute. And then lastly, over here to my left, we're gonna have the FSA 60R, and it is going to be the more heavy duty trimmer in this lineup. And I'll show the difference between those two here in a minute. Now let's dive into each individual piece of equipment and talk just a little bit real quick about each unit so you have a good idea of what you'd be getting yourselves into if you decided to go with a unit in the AK series. So let's start with the batteries being as that, that it's gonna be the most boring part, but it's the most important when we're talking about obviously how we're going to run these units. So within the AK series, like I said, we are going to have three different batteries. We're going to have the smallest as the AK-10, the midsize, the AK-20, and then the largest at the AK-30. Now, what makes the difference in these is the amount of cell in them also is going to be the weight and the amount of watt hours and amp hours. So starting here at the AK-10, we're going to be looking at about 1.8 pounds with the AK-10. We're looking at 72 watt hours on this battery and two amp hours. So what that means is, is that the watt hours and amp hours is going to determine the amount of power that the battery has and also the capacity of what it has on the amperage hours. So as we move up to the AK-20, we're actually going to double in size here. So we're moving up to 
2.7 pounds on the AK-20. We're moving up to 107 or 144 watt hours and 3.9 amp hours here at the AK-20. So you're basically getting twice the amount of battery once you jump from the AK-10 to the AK-20. And then once we jump to the AK-30, we're moving another step up. So here we're going from 2.7 pounds to 2.9 pounds. We're also moving up to 180 watt hours and 4.8 amp hours here at the AK-30. So you can see that all of these are identical. If we turn them over here on their sides, they are all identical there from the front to the back to the side. So these batteries are going to work in any of the AK series machines no matter what you're using it on, you're just going to have different runtime and different power capabilities depending on the battery. Now, there are recommended batteries for certain units, and we'll go over those as we go over each unit, but just know that they are interchangeable. Also, this one of the features that you'll notice on this battery is that right here at the front, you will have a button that will tell you the amount of juice that we have here in the battery. And then also on the top of the battery, you're gonna have an indicator panel here, whereas sometimes these these lights on the front will not always be green whenever you hit that button. Sometimes you will get red lights like it shows here on top. So if we get one red light, that means that the battery is either too hot or too cold to be able to charge or run the machine. And then also you may get four flashing lights. And if you get four flashing red lights, that means that this battery has a problem or the machine itself may have a problem and needs to go in for maintenance. Now, alongside with the battery here, the charger is going to be the AL101. Now we can see it's designed short to where if we put in a battery, it fits in perfectly snug just like that. But the nice thing about the AL101 charger is it's not only gonna work for the AK series batteries, but if you happen to jump up into that AP series and have the AP series batteries, this charger will also charge those just at a slower pace. Next, let's talk about the chainsaws in this lineup. Now here at first glance, if I go ahead and move these batteries out of the way, if you look at both of them, they are gonna look identical. Here on the sides, both of them are gonna have an oil reservoir. We are going to have this safety button on the handle on both of these. They're both going to have the loop handle, the chain brake here, and if we turn them around, both of them are going to have the rubber grip handles here. They are gonna have the quick adjust here on the chain. Once we pull our scabbards off here, they are both going to have the 12 inch bar and the quarter inch PM3 Pico chain from steel. And so they're both going to be virtually the same in looks, have the exact same features, the exact same safety features, interlocks. The only two different, the only difference between these two saws is the MSA 120 is going to be suggested to run with the AK 20 series battery. And with that battery, it's going to make up to a hundred cuts or have a runtime of up to 40 minutes. Now, the reason why this saw is suggested with the AK-20 is that this is going to be more of the smaller residential saw in the lineup. Now, if we move up to the MSA-140, this is going to be suggested with the AK-30 series battery, and it is going to have a runtime of up to 45 minutes. But what's different here is the internals. With the MSA-140, you are looking at a high torque brushless motor. So this saw is made for a little bit more heavy duty work, a little bit harder cutting, more cutting as you're gonna get up to 45 minutes with the suggested AK-30 battery. Whereas over here on the MSA-120, we just have that standard brush brushless motor. So real quick here, I'll show you how they run. We put in the 120 here. First of all, you're going to have a one click system. You're going to have that on both saws. One click here, the saws will not run. We pull our chain brake back. We hit our safety button and our trigger and it will not run. And that's because the battery is not fully seated. So once we push that down, make a full connection, we'll do the same thing here. Now these saws are both ready to run. So here is the MSA 120. I'll go ahead and pull the chain brake back. I'm going to push on my safety button here and pull the trigger. Chain brake there, make sure that that works. So if we're pulling on, hit that brake, it's gonna lock that up and make sure to keep you safe there with the chain brake. So now here on the 140, We'll do the same thing. We'll pull our chain brake back. We'll hit that button on the side and then pull our trigger. Ah! 
Make sure our chain brake works here. Locks that out. So I don't know if you could hear the difference, but there is a little bit of difference in the sound. Like I said, we have a high torque brushless motor here and then just a regular. So on this high torque, you have a little bit deeper sound there on the whizzing and wearing that's coming from that saw and just a little more high pitched here on the 120. So basically the same saw, both are going to be compatible with that 12 inch bar. You can drop down to a 10 inch, but it is recommended to be at the 12 inch. Just remember on the MSA 120, it's recommended the AK-20. 20 battery at least and on the MSA 140 the AK 30 battery now real quick talking about weight one thing to keep in mind is these saws are built almost exactly the same like we said but you are going to have a bit of a weight differential so here on the MSA 120C with the AK 20 battery we're going to be at 8.2 pounds and then on the MSA 140 with the AK 30 battery we're going to be at 8.6 pounds Next, let's talk about the hedge trimmers in the AK series lineup. So what we have here is the handheld HSA 56. Now this is going to be your standard hedge trimmer that you would normally see here. We have the battery compartment on top. We have an 18 inch cutter bar there with spacing of 1.1 inches. This is going to cut at a rate of 2,800 strokes per minute. And then it is to be coupled with the AK 10 battery. And if we couple that with the AK-10 battery, what we're looking at is up to 50 minutes of runtime. Now I've done a video on this showing that depending on conditions, the runtime can change. And that's going to be the case across this whole lineup is that you may see the up to runtime being a lot higher than what you're getting out of your unit and that all depends on the conditions and how hard you're using them. So here is the HSA 56. It is going to have the rubberized handle. It is going to have a four-way uh, ignition system, meaning that we have a trigger here, and then we have a fin on top. So once we push that trigger forward, hold our fin down on top, then we would have this up here on the handle, this lever here, and then we could pull the trigger. Once again, we do have that two-click system. So right here, once we were to put this down into the unit, now we could start this up push forward on our trigger, hold down on our fin here at our handle, and then pull the trigger. So very, very quiet, also very light. With the AK-10 battery in it, we are looking at 8.2 pounds. So this is a great unit here to use. Like I said, if you're that residential customer, you're wanting to get up early, and cut, maybe you're cutting later at night. Very, very quiet, very easy, very light, very easy to maneuver. But the hedge trimmer standalone here is gonna be the HSA 56 in the AK series. Now, along with the HSA 56, we're also going to have an extended hedge trimmer here, which is going to be the HLA 56. Now, once again, we are going to have that 18 inch cutter bar on this machine. The other great thing about this extended trimmer is it has an overall length of 82 inches. So you're going to be able to reach up high, get to those tall bushes and shrubs. And it also is going to have a head here that swivels 135 degrees. So we can go all the way up here into the lock position. And we can also lock it in various different positions going down all the way to that 90 degree angle. So a lot of adjustment here on this unit to be able to get it to the angle that you need to cut. So this unit overall weight wise, along with the AK-20 battery, which is recommended with it, is going to be right at 11.1 pounds. So it is going to be a little bit heavier unit, but you also do have the loop handle here out front. You are gonna have the rubberized handle here at your trigger. You are gonna have a one-way safety feature here that's gonna have a trigger that you have to push forward, and then you can pull the trigger to start. So if we went ahead and pushed this all the way in, now we can show we push in here.
Once again, very nice, smooth unit, going to be great for operating, of course, in those higher up areas. Maybe you have longer hedges, deeper hedges that you're needing to reach the back of. You're also gonna have this rubberized grip here in the middle that you can hold on to. And then whenever we're changing angles, they've actually made a nice handle here at the top of the unit so that you can change that angle very easily. And then a two button push system here. We just have to push in both of these buttons and then we can change the angle of that head. You're also going to have just a touch larger opening here at your blades as the spacing is going to be 1.2 inches rather than 1.1 on the HSA 56. And then with the AK20 battery on this unit, you're going to get up to 100 minutes of runtime on that battery. Moving on to our weed eaters or line trimmers as some call them. Like I said, we are going to have two in this series. So starting here with the FSA 57, this is going to be our smaller of the two units. Units. This is also going to be the more residential friendly um, or user friendly unit as I like to call it because of all of the adjustability. So first of all, we'll go ahead and show that as for one, this is going to have an adjustable shaft where we can push down here on this button and extend the shaft out or shorten it up. Depending on the operator there, you have a few different links there that you can be at to make sure and get that to the length that you need it. So that if you are a shorter operator or taller operator, you can match that shaft length to whatever size you need it at. Next, you are going to have an adjustable loop handle here. So we can simply back this off. And then we have a few different positions in which we can put this. We can go forward, we can go backward, up to a certain position, and then lock that into place. This unit is also going to be the lighter of the two units. So this unit is going to be 7.7 .7 pounds uh, coupled with the AK-10 battery. So once we were to put that battery in, we are now looking at 7.7 .7 pounds. So very, very light unit, very easy to carry around, very easy to use. But this trimmer is going to be specifically for line trimming. The only head that we're gonna be able to use on this machine is going to be a line head. Now here at the head, what we're going to see is we do have a bump guard here. So we can pop this forward. If we're going to be up against maybe those flower beds, those rock barriers, maybe those concrete barriers, whatever those things are, you are going to have that bump guard. You're going to have a very small shroud here, but it does have a cutoff here that is going to keep your cutting width right at 11 inches. So this is going to have a bump head on it that you can bump that out, tap it, tap it out, and the string will come out on its own when you need more, but it will cut it off to make sure we stay at that 11 inch cutting swath. So then moving back here to the handle, once again, we are gonna have that rubberized grip. We are gonna have a three-way ignition system here, meaning we're gonna have a trigger that we have to push forward, then we have a fin that we have to hold down on, and then we could pull the trigger to run the machine. So I'll go ahead and click that battery in. And once we do that, we can push forward, hold down on our fin, pull the trigger. And just like that, very, very quiet. You could hear it that it cut off that string there on the head. So you can see there that that is definitely working and it will keep that trimmer line at the length that we need to be. Now on that FSA 57 with the AK-10 battery, you are gonna have a runtime of up to 25 minutes. But like I said, keep in mind that you could move up to the AK-20 or AK-30 battery. Either one of those will work in that unit. It is just suggested to use the AK-10. So now as we move up here to the FSA 60R, this is gonna be our more upper level closer to a commercial grade unit in that AK series. And it is going to be coupled normally with the AK-20 battery. So we'll go ahead and pop that in place here. And this is going to be the heavier unit, like I said, with that AK-20 battery and along with the heavy, heavier duty head here and just the overall heavier construction, we're looking at 9.8 pounds on the FSA 60R. So we moved up from the FSA 57 to the FSA 60R, and then now we have jumped up almost two pounds, or just a touch over two pounds in weight. So a lot heavier machine, but 
some of the great features about this machine, we'll start here with the head, is this is going to have the auto cut C6-2. So this machine is going to be able to handle that larger line there. It's also going to be a quick feed system, a quick spool. And if you'd like to see how that worked, I'm gonna have a video on 24 seven parts where you can see how that works. But simply to load this line, we're just going to line up arrows. So there are arrows here on this round portion of the head and on the outside here, this white portion along with the outside that we're simply, once those are lined up, we can feed string through it, get it even on both sides of the machine. And then we can take this white portion here and just simply crank it and wind it and it'll suck that string up. And then loading string is as easy as that. Now also here at the head, we are gonna have a larger shroud, again with a cutoff, but this is going to allow for a larger cutting swath as you will move up to 13.8 inches with the FSA-60R. Now you're also going to have a bump guard here as well. Same thing, it's going to be at the length that it needs to be to make sure that when we're cutting around objects that we're not getting into those. So if we're going around those flower beds, maybe those trees that are new, whatever those things are and we don't wanna get into them, just remember that you do have that bump guard. And you can see also just how much more substantial the head here is, the motor that's driving this head, just a lot larger allowing for more power out of this machine. Now, if we move down the shaft, one thing that you'll notice is that we do have the loop handle style here that you would see on most of your gas powered trimmers. Now, this one is adjustable as well. You have two screws on top of it where you can loosen those up. You can move this up or down the shaft, whatever is most comfortable for you. And once we move back here to the handle, we'll notice once again, we do have that rubberized grip and we are gonna have that three-way ignition system here. So we have a trigger that we have to push forward, then hold down on the fin, and then we could pull the trigger. So I'll go ahead and pop that battery in. So if we push that in, hold down on our fin, and then pull the trigger. You can see right there. Now you can just hear definitely the difference between those two, that there is more power in this machine. You're also gonna be able to have that larger string. You'll be able to hold more string in this unit than you will on the FSA 57. Overall, just a heavier built unit, more bang for your buck. And of course, like we said, the heavier weight between the two, just keep that in mind. And keep in mind that this is suggested with the AK-20 rather than the AK-10. Now, one last thing that I forgot on the FSA 60 before moving here to our blower is that it also will have a runtime of up to 25 minutes with that AK-20 battery. Now, speaking of the AK-20 battery, we will be coupling the BGA-57 with the AK-20 battery, and it also will have a runtime of up to 25 minutes with that battery. And then once we have that battery installed, we're looking at a weight of 7.8 pounds. So a very light unit, very easy to carry around and use around the property. We'll see here also, yes, over the dust here, as these are units that I use commonly here around the barn, so they are dusty. Um, this is going to have an adjustable tube, so it's very simple and easy to adjust this tube. All we have to do is spin it. 90 degrees, and then we can simply pull that out or bring it in whichever we'd like to make sure to get that to the blowing length that we want. Let's simply twist that back in place. Now, specs on this machine, I know there are a lot of different ways that these blowers can be measured. So I'm just gonna hit you with all of them. We're gonna have a blowing force of nine Newtons. We're gonna have a max air velocity of 123 mile per hour, and then a maximum air output of 365 CFMs. So depending on which way you use to judge your blowers, there are all three of the force, speed, and volume factors that you would need to know. Now, as far as the features of this machine, it's pretty standard. We're gonna have our inlet right back here, of course, and then our outlet nozzle. And then right back here is gonna be our battery compartment, once again, with that two-part click. So we are out clicked right now. And then we are gonna have, once again, a three-way ignition system with a trigger on top and then a fin and then our trigger on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and pop that in and then go ahead and pull the trigger to let you know how it sounds. Give our table a good cleaning here. 
Now the other great thing about these blowers is like we've talked about with some of this equipment before is just how quiet it is. And on the blowers, it actually gives us a decibel rating of 59. So it is a very, very quiet blower. Like I said before with some of the other units, if you are one of those that likes to get up early and do yard work or later in the evening, this is gonna be a great tool to have that will not disturb people as much as maybe your typical gas blower. So the, there is the BGA 57, very great unit. And once again, remember that it is recommended to couple this with the AK-20 battery. Last but not least, let's talk about this showpiece in this AK series, which is the RMA-460V. Keep in mind that there is another version of this just without the self-propelled, which is going to be this handle right here. So in this machine, the battery that is going to be recommended is the AK-30. Now, right here in the battery port section, you're gonna see that there are two different slots. The bottom one is going to be the one where the battery actually runs off of, and then the top slot is just a storage spot to be able to have another battery on board in case you need it for that extra cutting. Now, also within the battery compartment here, we are going to have a key that pulls out. This is simply just gonna be a big fuse. Make sure you can pull this out if you have those kiddos around or just any other people you don't want to mess with your equipment, then you can take this key out and store it or simply just leave it here in the machine. And then right next to that, you're going to have a switch that says Eco next to it. So with this mower, you have an eco mode, which means if you're in that smaller, thinner grass, it will recognize that and it'll slow the RPM down to be able to go through that grass just as efficiently as it would if it was in the taller grass, it'll kick that eco mode off. That way you can conserve battery in those areas that you may not need this machine at full RPM. So with the AK-30 battery in place, this machine is going to weigh 58 pounds. So that is still gonna be light enough that it can be moved by one person in and out of a pickup bed or in and out of the back of a car. It is going to be very versatile. Now, along with being very versatile as far as the weight of this machine goes, it also can be broken down and made smaller, which I'll show here in a minute, but it also can be very versatile in the type of cutting it can do. As you can see right now, what we have put on is the bagger right back here at the back and it's going to be a 15.85 gallon bag now that can be taken off and removed very easily by raising this up simply pulling off that bag and taking that off to dump then here at the rear we also have a mulch plug that is put in right here at the back so if you did decide to mulch you could raise up and also disconnect our side discharge chute right here very easy to take that off close this up, have our mulch plug in, and then now we are in full mulch mode. Or if we decided that we did not want to bag or mulch, but we wanted to side discharge, you can simply add this side discharge chute back onto the side here. And that is going to turn this mower into a side discharge. Now, as far as breaking this mower down and getting it smaller to where we can move it a lot easier, you're gonna have two turn knobs here on the side that we're going to loosen up. And then we can simply let this part of the handle fall. Then we have two handles here that we can simply turn, turn those sideways on both sides. And then we can flip these handles forward just like that, making that a very small and compact unit to be able to pick up, move around, store, whatever we need to do, you can get that into a smaller state. Now to simply go back together with it, we would raise up here, turn in our notches right here, make sure that those lock into place. Now right here, they're in the top position, but we can also move these down into a lower position. If we need to, there is a middle and a low, and your low position would be right here. So as you can see, this is going to be very, very low for someone like me, but if you are that shorter operator, you do have that option, and then you also have an option here in the middle to fit that different height as well. But for me, since I'm the one using this, I'm going to leave this here in our top position, and then I would go ahead and go back on with these handles. just like that. 
Now let's talk a little bit about our handle situation here. So we have a two handle system on this machine. So like I said, the bottom one is going to be for our engage on our blades. Now the top one is going to be the engage for our self-propelled. So you can see that our battery is in place here. So if I push on that lever, it makes that mower go forward. And then right up here on our left hand side is gonna be the adjustment where we can go anywhere from 0.6 mile per hour up to 2.8 mile per hour on the self-propelled. So you can play with that, decide which of those notches there is going to be your desired speed. And then once you have that set, this is going to be your self-propelled. And then to engage the mower blades, we have a button over here on the side. We would need to push this down first and then pull up on our bottom lever. And then you can hear how the mower sounds. And then if you heard that, it was in that higher rev and then dropped down to the lower. So that is it dropping down into eco mode where we're going at less RPMs and using less battery. So we'll see if we can get that to do it one more time so you can hear it. We'll start it up. High rev. And then the drop down into that eco mode. Now, as far as cutting heights go, we know on a lot of lawnmowers, what we're gonna have to do is adjust each individual wheel. But on the steel RMA 460V and the RMA 460, you're gonna have a single point lever right here on your right rear wheel that is going to adjust this mower anywhere from one inch all the way up to 3.9 inches with eight different notches in between there so that you have multiple different ranges of heights that you can cut at. You're also going to get a steel 19 inch deck on this mower with a cutting width of 18.1 inches. Now, as far as the mowing capacity or the battery capacity that this mower will allow with the AK-30 and with the favorable conditions, you're looking at a total cutting area of 2,368 square feet. Now, that's going to vary on time depending on the type of grass, the type, how wet it is, how tall it is, how thick it is, all those different things. So the way that steel rates this is by the square feet. So the 2,368 square feet is what this is rated for. But like I said, that's going to depend on your type of yard. But overall, that is the RMA 460V. Everything that you should need to know about that along with the entire rest of the AK series units. So guys, I hope you liked this video. Hope this video helped you out. And if it did, we just ask that you would hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you guys need any John Deere parts, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.